In this video, we'll talk about homeostasis and dysbiosis, which are important concepts in the oral microbiome and in health. The oral microbiome is a community made up of both pathogenic and beneficial microbes. Even the healthiest patients have some level of pathogenic microbes living at their gum line, along with a healthy level of beneficial species, also known as commensals, that help regulate the growth of pathogenic microbes and prevent their overabundance. The outgrowth of pathogens is a key driver in oral disease. In this figure, you can see how this community drives health and disease, where on the left, we have a stable microbiome helping to maintain health, and on the right, we have a dysbiotic microbiome driving disease. Now first, let's talk about what happens in health. In healthy people, the community is stable over time in a state known as homeostasis. In homeostasis, a low level of inflammatory microbes are actually critical to health and help to maintain community stability. For example, microbes, including pathogens, that live at the gum line train the immune system to keep the community stable and prevent the overgrowth of pathogens. At the same time, a high abundance of beneficial microbes keeps the abundance of these pathogens low to maintain health and stability. The synergy between these microbes and the immune system is critical for stability and health. Without the synergy, the community is unstable and more likely to change over time. Now, let's take a look at what happens in disease. A dysbiotic microbiome allows for the overgrowth of pathogens. For example, with cavities, beneficial microbes normally colonize the tooth surface, balance pH, and help to prevent tooth decay. However, in dysbiosis, these microbes are missing, and acid-producing species become overabundant, causing cavities. Similarly, in gum disease, beneficial microbes that keep the community stable are missing, and this allows for the overabundance and growth of pathogens. Dysbiosis often requires more aggressive interventions to return to homeostasis. So here's a quick summary. Low levels of pathogenic microbes are actually extremely important for maintaining health by regulating immunity and stability of the community. Beneficial and commensal microbes are critical and required for homeostasis. Now, I'll take you through a real world example of homeostasis and dysbiosis in improving oral health with a bristle test. In this table here, each row is a different pathogenic species or score, and each column is a test from a bristle patient. The bristle gum inflammation score uses a proprietary algorithm to summarize the abundance of gum inflammatory pathogens and the risk of worsening gum disease. The bristle beneficial score summarizes the abundance of beneficial species that help stabilize the community. The beneficial species are not shown in this table as there are dozens of species that contribute to this score. Each box is color coded from a healthy green to an unhealthy red with yellow signifying somewhere in between. And higher numbers within the boxes represent a higher abundance of each species. From the abundance of these pathogens alone, it may be immediately obvious that patient two is in an unhealthy disease state as he has a higher abundance of these pathogens. And patient one is more healthy in a state of homeostasis. The bristle scores also reflect this. What about patient three? Just from the profile of the pathogens alone, it's difficult to tell where this community may be headed, if it's stable or if it's not. However, if we measure the rest of the microbiome and provide the beneficial score and a gum inflammation score, you can see now that this community is actually somewhat stable. This demonstrates the importance of measuring the rest of the microbiome and why looking at just five microbes is often insufficient to understanding health. In summary, bristle scores are based on the entire community and not just a small subset of individual microbes. The measurements of just a few microbes are often insufficient to help you understand the severity of dysbiosis or the direction of disease, while these scores help you understand the trajectory of health and disease. Finally, the goal is to achieve optimal scores in a stable community, not by completely eradicating microbes. The overuse of antibiotics is actually associated with worse long-term health outcomes, such as chronic infections, antibiotic-resistant infections, and even disorders such as IBD. This approach will help set your patients on the right path towards stable health.